In this lesson, we'll take a look at a cleaner workflow for animating constrained objects. The scene is animating with props B start. Now we may not want to add the constraints and, and animation directly on top of one object. I find it more manageable to, let's say, create a group that holds all of the constraints then at the same time having a control free for animation. So with that being said, the control object selected, let's go ahead and create a group with the pivot centered to the selection. To do that, we can go to Maya's command line, type in the group command. Following that, to rename the group, it's going to be dash n, followed by the name we like to give the group. So that's going to be grp cns, or group constraints. We want to be descriptive in case we need to search for this node later on, followed by the name of the object, that CC pen or pen control curve. So that's going to be CC underscore pen 01. We would enter. Notice the group has been renamed and it, its pivot is right where it needs to be on top of the selection. All right, from here, we'd want to go ahead and take the pen, reposition it in the hand for constraining. Now this also brings up an interesting point, a question we want to ask ourselves when doing this process. Would it be best to constrain the hand to the prop or the prop to the hand? I find it depends on two main things, the size of the object and the weight of the object. If you're working with a large or heavy object, it may be best to constrain the hand to the prop. We'll also take a look at another example of when we'd want to do that in the next lesson. But when it comes to a case like that, again, with a heavy object, there's going to be a lot of subtleties in the hand that you'll want to animate. And with that said, if we have the prop constraint to the hand, that means that's going to lead to a jittery object with all of those subtleties added to the hand's animation. So instead, again, may want to consider doing the reverse and we'll cover that in the following lesson but in our case with this pen animation we can go ahead and constrain it to the character's hand so let's go ahead and move this object doing it from the group it's going to have the constraint and if we go to frame 2 I actually have the hand posed out already so we can align the pen so it fits within the hand. Okay, great. And moving this just a bit more over, moving over with the move tool and rotating it out just a little bit more. We'll get it eventually. Okay, great. All right, so from here we're ready to set up our constraints. I'll head over to the outliner. We'll select our arm control, control click the group, and run a parent constraint with maintain offset. All right, so now we can go ahead and control the pen. Great. And we still have this clean control to add any offsets we need to make to the pen. Now let's say if we wanted to have this pen rest on the table. Well, in that case, of course, we could always go to the group and animate the group's weight or the constraint's weight. But we don't want to have to go to different different uh, locations to make this happen. Instead, what we could do is create a custom attribute tied to our animatable control. That way, all of the animatable channels are easy to access. So with the pen control selected, we can head over to Modify and choose Add attribute. I like to categorize things, which organizes things in the channel box. So in our case, let's go ahead and create a displayable attribute. We'll label that driver, make it displayable, choose add. That way, when the animator sees this, they know that the following attributes are going to be linked directly to the constraints weight for space switching. All right, from there, we can go ahead and create the animatable parameter. We'll just call this follow hand. We'll probably want it to blend. So we'll want to go ahead and get the blend parent attribute involved in, in this. 
So with that said, I'll go ahead and use a float for the data type. Give this a minimum of 0, maximum of 1, which is the same min and max for the constraints weight and the blend parent. From there, we can go ahead and choose OK. Now it's time to create the connection, and we can use the, cr the connection editor for that. So under Window, General Editors, Connection Editor, we can have the pens control loaded up on the left side. And if it's r really cluttered in the connection editor, chances are you just need to go to Show non keyable and uncheck that. So here, here it is checked, so it looks unchecked. So you'll want to check that for the right display as well, making sure that's going to be unchecked. And now, with the pen control selected, we'll hit the up arrow to get to the group. Again, if we want to go ahead and connect the blend parent, we'll need to set a few keys. Shift W, Shift E. We're going to add the group now to the right side. There's the blend parent. So we simply connect follow hand into blend parent. Great. Now, if you wanted to connect the constraints weight to that switch we've made, you'd have to select the constraint. You can't access it from the group. So going back to the outliner, we just want to get to the group, expand it. There's the parent constraint. Let's choose reload right, and then connect it from there. But the limitation with this is we're going to get a snap instead of a transition when we animate the weight. All right, so that's one thing that the blend parent attribute has over the the weight of the, in this case, parent constraint or any constraint. So I'll go ahead and close that out. Don't need to worry about that. Now, if we were to go ahead and select the wrist, go ahead and lift that up. All right, there's going to be no control yet because by default, our follow hand switch is set to zero. But if we were to go there and now change the value with the metal mouse button, just scrub, you can see now we have the smooth blending we need. All right, great. So again, we've learned a cleaner workflow for constraining an object that will be animated. Now, before we close off the lesson, I'd also like to bring your attention to, let's say, a paintbrush. With the delicacies of, of painting, you may want to constrain your character's hand to the paintbrush to really get that, that, that nice, elegant movement that you'd expect from a, a paintbrush animation. So that's a, a another scenario of, of working with, let's say, a, a writing utensil where you'd want to do the reverse taking the hand, constraining it to the prop. And we'll learn how to do that in the uh, next lesson. We cover how to constrain a character's hand to a, a sword for those type of animations.